Just for fun, let's talk jerseys for a bit. And I want to talk about Columbus, because Columbus is a nice, innocuous team that we in Canada don't think very much about, and the media certainly doesn't either, um, unless we want to talk about Panarin and Bobrovsky. But for today, I want to talk about jerseys. We've got the camera on a bit of a different angle, so we can get a better look at the jerseys. And um, here's your Reebok. So this is the last the last year. This is what they had. Of course, you got your cannons on the sleeves. This is a Reebok. This is a replica. So straight off the bat, I'm telling you it's a replica. It's not an authentic. Uh, Reebok authentics are fantastic. Replicas are nice as well. Um, they, the, the replicas, the, the biggest problem with them is snags and pulls. really is. But that's not what this video is about. This is about how uh, Columbus, I really think their Adidas looks better than the Reebok personally. Um, and I want to use them as an example because you don't think of them as a team that made any real changes. But the, the biggest difference you notice is, so here's the, the shoulder patch here. Okay. The shoulder patch on this one has a, a wider area around it. The shoulder patch is actually larger. And while it may not completely show on the camera, the silver has a sparkle to it that on the replica it doesn't have. Obviously on the authentic it would. It has a thicker shoulder patch. Um, now, the stripes and of course the neckline. You know, I've, I've kind of come around on the Adidas neckline to be honest. So you've got the Reebok neckline here, okay, with the NHL behind it, and the Adidas neckline around here, which of course looks a lot like the NFL jerseys, right? I, I actually am starting to come around to preferring the Adidas ones over the Reebok. I get why a lot of people still like the Reebok ones, but these have actually grown on me. I don't know. The only the only word I can use to find it, to, to describe it is they look cleaner. But the way the shoulder yoke is done, and of course, if you look at it, the, the stripes meet here, which seems to be a random area when you think about it, and here they would meet with each other lower down and into the NHL logo. Here it's above the NHL logo. I like that better as well. And I remember when they came out with these and they talked about how they changed the way the stripes worked. I'm like, who really cares? And and honestly, it looks better, I have to admit. Now, of course, the logo um, on on Adidas is, to me, that's where they really knock it out of the park. Um, the, the silver, and if you've had a, a jersey with this sparkling silver on it in Reebok, you likely know how easily it comes apart. Um, I had an LA Kings jersey which had this kind of silver on it. And it completely unraveled. It was the one with the shield. The black one with the shield. And I still don't have a black Kings with the shield to replace that one. I have a purple one though which is beautiful and probably looks better anyway. So I worry a lot less about getting another black one with the shield than I used to. Uh, but yeah, the, the silver is, is frustrating. And on the new, on the new jerseys it's not as, as likely to come apart. It still potentially could, I guess. But the way that they're sewn on and the way that they're done is so much nicer. And I, I think for me, you know, the, the biggest selling point for me was when they went over to Adidas, and obviously, now I'll angle the camera up to a more of a regular angle. Um, when, they went, when they went to the Adidas from, from the Reebok, and the price of the Reebok replicas regularly was, what, 149 um and and then your your authentics were usually about three hundred dollars and these authentics of of the adidas variety are 200 in canada usually 180 in the states depending on where you're shopping from and you can always get discounts you can always find them on sale i find them on sale um i i, I honestly i think these are really well done my my biggest issue with the adidas and it's a nitpick is the word authentic because it makes it sound like this is exactly what they were on the ice, and it isn't. And as I, I told people after I watched games in Vegas, I actually, you know, we're sitting right next to the players' bench, and I have my Vegas jersey on, the exact same one the team's wearing, and I'm holding out the sleeve, and I'm looking at the stitching, and I'm saying to my wife, look, at they're different. Look at this. Oh, yeah, no, they're different. So that's, that's the only nitpick I have with these now is that they're not actually what the guys were on the ice, but they're close. The one bizarre thing is that, that they do have the, the fight strap, which guys wear. Just the jersey's different. I, I kind of get it. I, they, $200, I think, is probably the maximum price point they can hit with your standard jersey before people are going to say, forget it. Um, the Fanatics, of course, are, are usually 150 The Fanatics go on sale a lot more often than the Adidas, and I think it's because they're a lot cheaper. I have a feeling that they're a lot cheaper to manufacture. I think the... the um, the price point being where it is, 
might be attractive to people with less money. And I understand that. Um, another thing I want to say is that if for people who are starting out a jersey collection, you can get Reebok right now. Uh, the, the especially these these replicas, you can find them for 50, 60 bucks, no problem. I don't know if it was an overproduction issue. I don't know if if companies just had way too much stock and and didn't realize how much Adidas was going to change the game, but. Demand for Reeboks really dropped quickly after the Adidas came out. And I think that's part of the reason why is because it was only a $50 difference between buying this brand new and buying this. And this is a this is a higher quality garment. But now this, you can probably get online for cheaper. I've talked about full moon jerseys, which that's part of what they do is that they get jerseys that other guys can't sell and they sell them off. A large portion of my collection is through them. And... Uh, yeah, that's that's really honestly the way I've gone with it is to get all the replicas and get them because they're cheap and then When I can when I can do so Get the adidas as well because I know the shoulder patches are better The logos are fantastic and I know it may not completely translate onto the screen because the logos look exactly the same I know on the camera, but uh, the, the logos the detail is nicer on the adidas than it is on the Reebok um, I also want to throw in while we're discussing jerseys, Yvonne and I are going to do a another jersey uh, fixing video because people have asked us, like, how do you fix this? How do you maintain your jerseys? Um, white is always going to be a problem. Always. Uh, it's, it's a tough lesson that I've learned over the years. White jerseys equal headaches. Absolute, complete, total headaches. And, and as much as I enjoy having them, and I really think white jerseys pop more than the dark version of the same thing, the dark ones don't hold stains like the white ones do. And it's it's just, it sucks. Uh, the Steve Eiserman jersey I got not that long ago with Detroit, there's a couple of stains on it. I don't even know what happened to it. I, I have no idea, but Yvonne's doing her best to fix it. Fingers crossed. Um, because that's one of my favorite jerseys. But again, because it's white, it will attract White jerseys. If you have white jerseys in your collection, hold it up to the light and you go, what the... Was I at a crime scene? Was there a murder committed with this jersey? It's insane. And that's... You don't... So I'm just saying don't hold a white jersey up to the light if you've had it for more than, I'll say, six months and you've worn it regularly because they, they really hold stains. And in some cases, they just can't come out. I've had jerseys I've had to replace because I can't get rid of the stains. And it, it's the kind of thing, too, that... Just people you pass day by day, you know, in your daily life, they're not going to think anything of it, but you know it's there and you're pretty sure they can see it. And then their eyes dart down and you're like, okay, they they could have seen the stain. I, I feel embarrassed. And it, it just, it gets worse from there. Um, and, and with staining, I, I will say I, the Adidas ones and the Reeboks, there doesn't seem to be a big difference. Um... Although I, I do think that the Reebok replicas, much like with the snagging, I think that the staining is, 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 is easier to have it become permanent. Feels that way anyways. Uh, I do have some Reebok Authentics as well. I don't have a Reebok Authentic in Columbus. Um, and I, I picked Columbus for this because, again, there's very little difference between these two shirts. And, and one last question I was going to ask you guys is, so while I'm doing my, my inventory... I kind of qualify these as being uh, duplicates of this. So when I'm doing the countdown, when I'm doing an inventory, when I'm deciding what should be in this room and what shouldn't, the Reebok ones are kind of ending up in a duplicates area, which we're going to have some fun with the duplicates stuff uh, once we start doing meetups this summer. Um, but should, should in some cases, the Reebok, like in this case, for instance, should it be considered separate and should both of them be included in the countdown? So that's a question I've got, and I, I, I'm just curious to know what people think um, about that. Because in some cases, I, I think it would be a good idea. In some cases, I, I don't see a difference, really, between the Adidas and the Reebok, other than just, you know, the logo being nicer, the shoulder patches being better. Um, you know, so so let me know what you guys think. Should, should I uh, include them? Because I've got some ridiculousness. I'll close out with my ridiculousness. And, and this is this is kind of just how, how ridiculous it gets. It is it is the most ridiculous part of my collection. So 
This is the Calgary Flames, 1979-1989 Stanley Cup winning CCM. This is the Calgary Flames throwback Reebok that they had up until a couple years ago. This is the Calgary Flames Adidas they currently use for a throwback jersey. This this is... Yvonne says it's a sign I need help. But, again, are they exactly the same? Do only, Does only one of them need to show up on a countdown? Or are there arguments for the three that they're different necklines? It's... The striping is the same, mostly... The fabric is different. Do I get into the fact that some jerseys are made just completely different from others and use that to decide countdown stuff? It's this kind of stuff that I'm trying to figure out as I figure out what should be on the set and what shouldn't. I have about 300 jerseys in this room, and I have a lot more that aren't. So, um, there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video, and this is just kind of a fun thing to do. And because I get asked about for, by people uh, regularly about, well, should I do, get Reebok? Should I get Adidas? What's the difference? Minor differences. If you're just collecting and you're just starting, there's nothing wrong with Reebok replicas. There's nothing wrong with getting a good old-fashioned CCM. You can get one off a seller on eBay. Just check the user's ratings. If, if you look at a jersey site and everything's on sale, brand new Austin Matthews for $69.99, that's a knockoff. Um, so there you go. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And hey, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.